planning zone as to... This is St. Mark's Venice, but Venice Beach, Los Angeles. The murals here are out of doors, where most of the action takes place. It combines in a playful and pluralistic way that extraordinary diversity of images and cultural experiences that characterizes the postmodern city. Different groups and lifestyles are all on display in the carnival-like atmosphere. All is on offer for those who can afford it. Whether it's developing a skill, entertaining a crowd, freshly cut hands here, still wiggling, or losing yourself in new shapes and spaces. This is one version of postmodernism, many different styles of life and leisure to choose from. But postmodernity doesn't just mean style, it can also mean segmented and fragmented forms of life, all in danger of splitting apart and threatening each other. Elsewhere in the city, we'll see other aspects of that dream, as well as some that threaten to turn into a nightmare. Los Angeles has been described as the postmodern city, it's one of the most segregated cities in the world, a horizontal automobile culture, sectioned off into a patchwork of ethnic and racial enclaves, which are almost self-sufficient and inward turning. Almost everybody we talked to had fears about being assaulted, robbed, even murdered. As a result, residential enclaves are being fenced off with iron gates and manned by teams of security guards. No longer public spaces to be enjoyed by everybody, but private areas, closed to all except the registered residents and their guests. This increases the sense of isolation and fragmentation experienced within the city. Shopping malls with private security guards and electronic surveillance are similarly taking over from the open public spaces of streets where shopping and other activities once mingled together. If you follow the freeway to the downtown financial district, the enormous recent development of Los Angeles is on visible display. Amidst the towering financial spires are five tubes of circular steel and glass that constitute the Bonaventure Hotel. It's a building which has featured prominently in the debates about Los Angeles. One of the participants in those debates is Professor Edward Soja of the University of California at Los Angeles. We asked him to be one of our guides around Los Angeles and around the issues that it raises. One important issue is about the spatial organization of the postmodern city and how we are led to submit to its controls as well as to its charms. A castle city in which bodies of people are controlled. The Bonaventure Hotel reflects the very nature of the postmodern experience, both literally and figuratively. The outside of the building reflects the enormous growth of a postmodern downtown a kind of carceral city, a city of international capital and cor corporate capital uh, within the United States as well, uh, of local capital and global capital. A new city, a new downtown, for Los Angeles has not had a well-developed downtown over the years, throughout its uh, 200 years of growth. And as I say, it also reflects the postmodern experience internally as well. The Bonaventure has become a focal point for the debate on postmodernism ever since its discovery as a postmodern's hyperspace by Fred Jameson some years ago. It began with Fred Jameson's own personal experience in the Bonaventure Hotel in a uh, professional meeting where most of the people going to attend the conferences and sessions found themselves getting lost within the interior space of the Bonaventure Hotel. The only way you can understand the nature of the argument that Jameson and others have developed over the years is to actually move in and move through the Bonaventure Hotel. It's a landscape that's highly fragmented. It's a space that decenters you, makes you feel lost. And in this feeling of being lost, dislocated, you feel that your only recourse is to submit to authority. You're helpless. You're made helpless. You're peripheralized. You're lost in these spaces. And the way you accommodate yourself to them and the way you survive in them 
is essentially to submit to forms of overseeing, social control, authority, often invisible, by the way, because part of being lost is that even when you're willing to submit to authority, you can't find it. The postmodernity of the Bonaventure thus is not in its shell. Its shell, stylistically, the architects would insist, is not postmodern in style, but is instead late modern or modernist in some form. It's difficult to find the main entrance. There's a pedestrian entrance, but the pedestrian entrance is hidden in a concrete bunker that makes one feel to, uh, this couldn't possibly be the entrance to a major hotel. Most of the entrances are flyover and walkways in the sky connected to other parts of the postmodern downtown of Los Angeles where one gets equally lost trying to move around. One enters the building and one sees a kind of Bastille-like a fortress that it consists of a series of columns. Amidst the columns are these funny little gondolas, the external elevators going up and down, uh, presumably showing that the outside is inside and the inside is outside. The very metaphor, by the way, of the postmodern city itself. The outside becoming inside, the periphery becoming central, as in Orange County and elsewhere in the region, and the center becoming peripheral, as in downtown, becoming lost becoming decented from one's conventional and familiar understandings of behavior in the inner city. The lifts themselves are, or excuse me, the elevators themselves uh, are uh, uh, indicators, uh, the first indicators, the outside visual indicators of the strange spaces that one is going to find in maneuvering and traversing the inside of the hotel. There are shops that receive no customers, largely because the customers can't find them. There are uh, constant pictures of people walking around, uh, hotel guests walking around with their suitcases, totally lost, not knowing how to get out or get back into the hotel rooms that presumably are their refuge from the confusion. You walk into one entrance that seems like a major entrance, and to get to anywhere else, you find you're blocked. You're blocked by elevator shafts, you're blocked by wonderful sitting spaces, great concrete chairs that uh, encourage you to sit down and enjoy the space. But the spaces, those chairs are always empty because no one could possibly feel particularly relaxed in this internal space. The feeling that you have is this feeling of dislocation, an argument that was central to uh, Jameson's response to this postmodern space. And that is the argument that we must develop a new way of understanding what I call spatiality, the spatiality of postmodernism, if we're going to be able to resist its very attractive lures. Uh, postmodernity is not the construction of simple uh, Disney worlds of fantasy, uh, but it's the production of a kind of hyper-reality that is more real than reality itself. Uh, and uh, it's a reality that has tremendous attractions to it. Uh, there are lots of things even inside this microcosm of the Bonaventure Hotel that are attractive, enjoyable, super modern, ultra clean, and indeed sometimes ultra engaging. You see this, as I said, inside the Bonaventure and outside a, a kind of complex mirror reflection of the very nature of postmodern society and postmodern experience. At the time of making this program, the Bonaventure Hotel was said to be on the brink of bankruptcy. There's some concern that this, this might be the first one of the, the kinds of historical monuments uh, of postmodernity, whether it should be preserved uh, not as a hotel, as a functioning hotel, uh, but as a kind of new monument uh, of the recent history of postmodernity is a, an interesting question that perhaps the future developers of downtown Los Angeles will have to address. The Bonaventure Hotel is set in the middle of the reconstructed downtown financial area, which was only developed as a result of the massive influx of international, especially Japanese, capital in recent years. So here we're in the financial district, with its hotels as well as office buildings and bank buildings. And it's been constructed on an old residential area of the inner city called Bunker Hill, which was essentially leveled 
to construct this new dynamo of uh, international capital that is downtown Los Angeles. But as one moves around it, one can see the other theme parks of the inner city, the other specialized spaces, uh, often also spaces of hyper-reality. Going just beyond the Bonaventure to the north, one enters what I've called the Citadella of Los Angeles, Citadel LA, the second largest government employment district in the United States. Not a very visible and dramatic site, but nevertheless a very imposing center for governmental, political, and police activity. Very close by, in this relatively small downtown, are some extraordinarily heterogeneous and diverse pockets, zones, turfs, postmodern sub-theme parks, if you will. Not far from City Hall is the Grand Central Market, the hub of Broadway, the busiest commercial street for the present-day Latino community of Los Angeles. In Grand Central Market, the traditional shopping streets of Mexico City or Guadalajara are simulated in a bustling recreation of a Latino world, Los Angeles style. So successful are these hyperreal marketplaces strung along Broadway that it is said to be more profitable per square foot of frontage than Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills with its simulations of the boutiques of Europe. To the north of El Pueblo is an expansive Chinatown that's growing heavily with uh, influxes of Chinese migrants and Chinese capital from various parts of the Chinese diaspora, Hong Kong, Singapore, Vietnam, Taiwan, as well as a trickle from mainland China. Just east of the citadel is Little Tokyo, an area of Japanese-American settlement, but also an area for the concentration of massive amounts of capital from Japan rebuilding it into a symbolic space to accommodate the many visitors from Japan that come into Los Angeles each year. One can have all of the conveniences of modern Japan downtown in Los Angeles in Little Tokyo. Just south of this very modernized or postmodernized Little Tokyo is a peculiar zone of East Asian toy shops and factories and warehouses. It acts as a buffer between the modernity and contemporariness of the Little Tokyo area as a kind of transition and buffer against the Skid Row area just south of it the center for homelessness in Los Angeles, expanding tremendously and being contained through public policy in this particular gilding of Skid Row that has been taking place over the last 20 years. Efforts to make Skid Row somewhat comfortable, primarily aiming at keeping the people in or at least perhaps forcing some of them to somehow disperse from downtown. Sitting in this downtown hub uh, by the Bonaventure, one realizes that one is in, in this financial center uh, of global finance, that one is at the center of uh, the, the developed world, the first world, uh, and yet one is floating as a kind of island in a large sea of third world populations. This collar uh, is a remarkable concentration of third world immigrants from every corner of the world, uh, and as I say, it is, it is a feature of this inner city. Uh, and it, although in the past, uh, in the modern 